My dear friend, welcome back to another Blender to Microsoft Flight Simulator tutorial. And uh, today I want to show you how to make a flag, an animated flag that uh, reacts to the wind strength and to the wind direction. Uh, first thing first, we need to add uh, a plane in Blender. So add mesh plane and uh, rotate it uh, in the X direction, uh, maybe uh, scale it uh, to, to resemble um, a flag, the, the, the flag, shape of the flag. Uh, let's put it uh, for this example here, maybe 3x. Yeah, like this. Uh, let's add a pole for the flag. So add mesh uh, cylinder. 16 will be okay. The radius 0 0.05 will be okay. And the height 4.5 should be okay oh yeah is that so this flag is uh, yeah triple four two by two so maybe a little bit higher like so very big flag y g x and now select all and reset all transformation. This is very important because we have uh, we needed to add later some some bones to this um, to this flag. So now we can um, subdivide a little bit this flag. Uh, I'm gonna do with the five subdivision by five subdivision here. Okay. Okay, looks like a, a flag. Let's add uh, a new material. Okay, the standard material, flag simulator. It's really not uh, that important. And I'm gonna select from my tutorial. That's nice design that uh, they are guests uh, on the Discord bag for uh, for me, for my logo. And also some material for this uh, dust pole, maybe like this, uh, some metallic. Okay, not really important for the sake of this tutorial. Okay, now the flag is, uh, is static and we need to find a way to move it. Blender has um, some physics inside. It is this uh, little tab here where you can add some physics and now we need to add a cloth modifier to the plane, which is our uh, flag source. I'm gonna call this. Uh, what does the, the cloth do? Pretty much nothing. If you click play, the flag has now some physics, it has some gravity, but it has uh, some uh, other properties like uh, like tension strings, a lot of stuff. <laughs> okay, so the basic to make uh, this flag are to go into the edit mode, select the vertices. I'm gonna select this one and this one. We're gonna go into the vertex group, other vertex group and create this vertex groups pins and now going back to the object in its physics properties I'm gonna scroll down here into the shape section and into the pin group I'm gonna select our pins now if we play the animation is still um, is still falling because we created an empty group with the vertex now we can assign those vertex to the pin group and now if we play the animation the flag will act like a flag let's shade the smooth so it's better and also let's add uh, maybe some more weight to the flag it's in the physics properties let's make it uh, well maybe one kilo but we can uh, we can tweak that later okay it's a little wobbly. We can add now self collisions. Uh, collision, self collision. Okay. Yeah, now it's better. Now we don't want the flag to fall down only for its gravity, but we want it to move in, uh, in some wind, to have it uh, moving in some wind. So let's add, let's add force field, wind, our wind is here. So let's grab it, GZ, 
rotate in the Y by 90 degrees. Uh, let's move this uh, here. And now with some strength, if we play the animation, okay, the flag is start falling, but later we start moving. So maybe one kilo is too much, maybe 0 0.5. And now the flag is flagging. Of course, if we want her to move it faster, we can increase the, the strength of the wind. And now we have a working flag. You can find this tutorial everywhere on the internet. Uh, usually the, the guys on the internet use uh, mm, more... Um, more subdivisions because they don't need that to, to put in a flag simulator, uh, but we need that to have an object with um, with not so much subdivision. If we export this to the flag simulator, uh, it will not move. It will not move because the flag simulator doesn't recognize uh, the cloth uh, physics and uh, neither the wind that we have added now. Microsoft Flag Sim Simulator only support uh, bones animation. So let's add uh, an armature. Let's add an armature, because we need bones. Here it is, single bone. Now I'm gonna switch to the X-ray, which is gonna be handy for this job. I'm gonna put the armature maybe like here. It's not a problem, we're gonna fix that. And uh, rotate uh, on the Y axis by, my, by 90 degrees, or uh, Y 90 degrees, it's okay. And uh, now I'm gonna apply all the transformer to my armature so its origin point it's at the origin of the blender is 0, 0, 0 and also its scale is 1. Now I'm gonna go into the edit mode for the bone. I'm gonna put it right on top of the flag and I'm gonna G Y is G X to stretch it for all the flag length. Now I'm gonna subdivide this by five times. So each um, each head of the bone uh, will match the um, the cuts that we have done here in the flag. So now we have uh, um, a series of bone. We select them, all of them, and Shift D and GZ for all shift digits that for all the cuts we have made there is really, really no need to be so precise okay now we have a bunch of bone and if we play the animation the bone will stay put because we, <laughs> we need to add an animation to the to the bones we need to find a way to connect our um, flex source to our armature. And this is the very tedious thing about the, fl the flag. <laughs> this is the reason why I didn't do that till now, but uh, a lot of guys ask us, so I'm, I'm gonna do that. We need for each vertex of the flag to create a specific vertex group. So we, we go to the vertex group, we add one, and uh, we're gonna call um, the, um, the horizontal line with the letter of the alphabet. So this is letter A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, and the vertical line with the number. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Correct? Yes. So this will be A1, and assign, this will be A2, new vertex group, double click, A2, and assign, New vertex group, this is going to be A3, and assign another one, A4, and assign another one, A5, and assign so first line is go, this is B1, and assign. and so on with all the other vertices.
it's a good idea to save every now and then. So flag tutorial. Okay, now we assign all the vertex group to each vertex and um, to link the, move, the, the bones to each vertex, we need to go to the pose mode, select first bone, go into the bone constraints and uh, we're going to add the damper track and the target is going to be our flexors. And the vertex group for this target is going to be A1. So as you can see, the head of the, the bone is now snapped to the vertex A1. And uh, we need to do the same for each bone. So let's go ahead, out of dump track constraints, target flexors, it's going to be A2. This one, bone constraint, dump track flexors, A3, and so on. Okay, so if we play the animation, now you can see that the bones are following the same movement, uh, the bone that, that we have uh, already assigned the damper track, are following the same movement that the flag is doing. And this is great. This is great because uh, uh, if you have followed my previous tutorial about the, the wind socks or maybe the animated people, we know that we can later bake this movement and translate it into the flight simulator. So let's continue with the other balls. Okay, splendid now, all the bones are green, so that means that uh, every bone has now a constraint. And uh, in fact, if we play the animation, we're gonna see our flag waving, and we can uh, hide the, uh, the bones. Yeah, object mode and viewport. Okay, and as you can see, the flag is moving and is moving pretty damn good. And is not finished, guys. <laughs> this is only the first part. Now we have our source for the flag, and we're gonna call this collection flag source. And why we have we need to have a source, and uh, if we have a source. Of course, we need to have a destination because uh, the time when we bake uh, this action, all the relation to the cloth modifier will be gone. Uh, the baking of the action destroys uh, uh, every relation, every constraints that the bones have. So we need to find uh, um, a way uh, to have this um, this animation this to have this uh, relation for uh, multiple animation because we want mm, the, uh, to have an animation for various wind strength because if we change the wind uh, the wind properties maybe we want an animation for a very fast wind we need to have the ability to change the wind and to have the bones moving 
along with the wind. Okay, so before um, duplicating the this collection, uh, we needed to add uh, an empty. And here it is. And we can parent the armature to the empty. So Control P, parent to object. And the source uh, direction of orientation. So we can now duplicate the whole stuff here. Well, let's duplicate this. Duplicate the collection, and this will be our workspace. Yes. So now we can bake this action into an animation. So let's do that. Pause mode, pause, animation, and bake action. Visual King and Clear Constraints. So it looks like it doesn't work it. But as you can see, our source flag still. Going into bottom mode, as you can see, our source flag, uh, which is yeah, this one, is still affected by some physics. And if we remove the physics and the wind, the flag is still because we need to parent this flag to the bone. So. We click on the on the flag, shift click the armature, control P and parent with automatic weights. Uh, this is the object that the simulator is gonna recognize. This is the object we can export into the flag uh, simulator. Okay. So now We can go to the dub sheets, into pose mode, and select all the bones. The baking adds also location and scaling keyframes. We don't want them. So I'm going to mm, open the dub sheet, select the scaling keyframes. Here are all the scaling keyframes for each bone, and I'm going to remove them. Also, I don't want the location keyframe too. I only want rotation keyframes. And if we play the animation, you can see that we really don't need rotation and uh, well, we really don't need the, uh, the scale and the location keyframes, but only rotation keyframes. Very nice. So now we have an animation for our flag. And uh, if we go to the action editor, maybe this is uh, wind speed. I would say maybe 15 knots, could be 15 knots. Yeah, it could be 15 knots, yes, of course. And now we need to select the part of the animation we want. Because as you can see, the, the start of the animation is, is not so nice. It's <laughs> uh, is, is not gonna work with the, with the loop. And maybe a good animation will be from maybe 60. To 100. maybe more, yeah, 210. So we can remove those keyframes here. 
and those keyframes here and move everything with G to zero okay uh, so now tweaking uh, the timeline by 150 yeah correct now we should have a nice uh, smoothless uh, looping uh, animation yes it's okay so back in the top sheet we can now push down our wind speed to the nonlinear editor and there it is it's a good idea to save the animation as fake user So this one will be wind speed 15. Okay, we can now make an animation all, uh, also for the um, uh, orientation. And we want to make sure that our flag is going to rotate in a clockwise direction. And bringing up the um, M panel to see the, the rotation in degrees. So at frame zero, I'm going to insert a rotation keyframe for our empty. And now I'm going to frame 360. With 359, it's 359, yeah. And rotate on the Z minus 359 and insert a rotation keyframe. We'll be switching to the dove sheet. And I want a linear interpolation between those frames. As you can see, the, the flag rotates and the movement of the bones continues. Now we need to make sure that we have a timeline long enough, 360. And here it is. So for the uh, this object, maybe uh, we can do either double sided. Yeah, we can do double sided, or you can um, solidify it. And uh, do the um, do the UV mapping on both sides of the of the flag. Okay, now we have uh, the orientation animation where they are uh, in the nonlinear territory. We have the orientation animation, the, and this will be the our orientation. I need to push it down, so it's orientation. I, if you know, you can push down your uh, your animation here uh, yep and uh, an animation for this wind speed okay now we need to make the other wind strength animation so i'm gonna add uh, my workspace here bring back uh, the the source and duplicate it It is our source. I'm gonna tweak the wind. Uh, maybe something like 300. Now let's see how, how it works now. So maybe this is our wind 10 animation. So it's like okay. So pose mode, pose, animation, bake action. Now we can really decide now that our animation can start maybe at 100 and then to 50. 
Suppose animation bake action and I want to bake from 100 to 250. Visual King, clear constraints. I'm gonna press OK. Perfect. And now the wind, the bones should move. We can remove the wind and remove the physics from our source. Okay. If you remember, we have the keyframes from 100 to 250. We can move them to zero. And we can call this wind speed 10. Making this as a fake user. Now, I made this as a fake user because I want to use this animation here in my workspace. So I re enable my workspace. I'm going to select the wind speed 10 for our flag. And here it is. And I'm going to push it down. Here it is the length. And I'm going to push it down. So if we go to the nonlinear animation, We have wind speed 15, and now we have also wind speed 10. Got it. So we can delete this now. Let's delete the hierarchy. Is the hierarchy. Uh, now, another animation for very high wind. So, Duplicate the collection, adjust the wind to our needs. So maybe 3000 is that much? Yes, this can be wind 20 for 20 knots. It's okay. So we're starting from 50. To 200 is 50 okay maybe 100 yeah maybe 100 to 250 also this one is okay like this so pause mode pose animation bake action 100 to 250 visual king and clear constraints I'm gonna press okay Top sheet. I remember to remove the scale of the frame from the other one. So removing the scale uh, for all the bones, all the bones, scale, and location keyframe. Okay, and this will be wind speed 20. Fake user. And a workspace. This one. Wind speed 20. Post mode. A. Hey. Select all. And move this into zero. And push it down. And no linear animation. We have wind speed 20. Okay. And you can do this for all the wind speed you want. We need to have um, a zeroed animation uh, at the fourth pose. Uh, that is with the with the bones without any movement without any rotation. 
And to do this is very simple. We go to frame zero, we select all the bones, maybe going into the sheet and create a new animation. Select all the bone in post mode and press Alt R, Alt G, Alt S. So we remove scale and the rotation and the um, location from each bone. And this will be our default state. And I'm gonna insert a rotation keyframe here, also on frame one and also on frame two. I'm gonna push this down to non linear animation. So here we have our default state too. Yeah, great. So we have win our win 10 here. Okay, our win 15. Okay, and our wind uh, 20. Yeah, it's moving quite fast. Okay, now the, um, the flag is done. We need to do another animation, maybe for the wind 5. Can do this. Yeah, why not? And try to play with uh, with the properties here of the of the animation, and we can have uh, some more keyframe here by going into the cache settings, and maybe going up to 500, and also I need the timeline to be longer. And now let's see what we have got here. I'm from maybe 150 to 305. Oh, 150 to 280, maybe for the swind could be okay. So, our armature, pose mode, pose, animation, bike action. And I said 152 to 80. These are key, keying and clear constraints. And okay. Okay. So object mode. This one. The sheet. Scale. Remove. Location. Remove. It's great. And this is wind speed zero five and fake user. Yeah, splendid. Can remove this and go back into our workspace here. Did it inside the double sided material here? No, yet. Here it is double sided. So the bones, wind speed zero 05. Let's put it at zero. So pose mode. And here it is. We don't need all the summary. G. And grab it to the zero keyframe and push it down to the non linear animation. So this will be wind speed zero five. So to top, okay, the flag should be okay for exporting. And now I'm gonna save the project. 
well, we can delete this one. Save the project. Bring up our AMP panel to do the export. Generate the XML, flux source. I don't want the flux source. Reload all of these. But I want to I want to export our flag workspace and the, my file name is going to be flag I'm a flag So this should be a sim object because we want to it we want it to react to wind and to wind strength and to wing orientation so we're going to put this in a um, sim object model lib so I, but we need to go to lidl lidl here it is package sources sim objects landmarks and new it's gonna be mamu flag and the system five <laughs> mamu flag five and it's gonna be model and texture and inside the model folder we can export the XML and the GLTFs as long as the texture folder and as, as the as long as the texture file. So we can now see the we can now check our GLTFs is if everything is okay. So we have our texture that has been exported and our GLTFs and been is here. So to check it model here it is windows visualizer and now the flag is now playing the default state animation this is the win05 yeah pretty pretty much good this is the wind 10 And all the other wind speed. The fastest one and the orientation animation. Okay, now we need to set up our. Um, well, I'm gonna call this Mamu flag. And maybe let's call this small flag. Uh, we need to set up our um, sim object, and uh, you can go through the um, to our sim object tutorial or to the WinSock tutorial. Maybe um, the thing is always the same. We need to have a sim.cfg inside our model folder, inside our sim object package source folder. And the object is mammal flag. And we need a model of GFG, and also I need the, the value into this XML. Sim object landmarks mammal flag uh, model. So the model dot GFG we go to the mammal flag dot XML and save. And now we need to copy the animation for each um, wind speed and also the stuff here. Okay, so the name for our animation is uh, wind speed, if I remember correctly. So those are the name of our animation wind speed and we export that again okay that's correct so it's wind speed 0 5 10 15 and 20 And I need to generate some new fresh UIDs for this animation. A 
Okay, so now we can set the threshold for our animation. So this will play at five, this will play at 10, maybe this a 15 and maybe this a 20. Okay, uh, and we win velocity in knots and about the behaviors, uh, we can use the windsock because we have uh, use the orientation yes it's, it's orientation so it should orient without any issues if i remember well so i can save this uh, we need to go to my package definitions And add a source for our um, sim object. So this will be the mammoth flag. Okay, so let's compile. Okay, our model flag has been compiled correctly. And now we can go into the flag simulator to see the results. Okay, so I'm back into the flag simulator and let's add our new sim object. So I'm gonna go to the sim object. Sim object, here it is. I'm gonna press O and search for something made by mom when i made a lot <laughs> and the mammoth flag this is what i want and let's add it to the scene and our flag is uh, is doing what it should do so it's moving with the wind is oriented uh, maybe 90 degree off because i know that this uh, wind socks is oriented in the right way and let's see if the wind orientation works so here it is so wind is coming from the west and now we need cover from the east and it's okay if i increase the wind the wind so the the flag movement changes as well if i decrease the wind aha uh -huh, i made the same mistake here huh because uh I have um, in the XML, I can show you now a uh, little package sources, see more just landmarks, uh, mammal flag, it is here. Well, oh, can delete this mammal flag. I set up this animation to start from five knots not from zero knots so this should be something like this so it's zero and this will be five and this is gonna be uh well can can be 10 and this is gonna be 15 years okay uh but we can we can change this uh and anytime we want i know i guess we need uh, uh to reload the the simulator itself to to get the to get to get the, the change working uh but we have a flag we have a moving flag so we can be really um, satisfied with this and i hope you enjoyed this show and don't know if you have already have done but subscribe the channel if you like this kind of uh, tutorials if you want to donate uh, to to Bamboo design it's appreciated uh, to continue this uh, tutorials and this has been a lot for me because I really hate making those flags, but the time is needed because they are quite boring to do. The all, all the vertices or the constraints for the bone, but uh, the result is uh, is quite nice. <laughs> and I see you next time. I'm gonna have a good time to edit this video. See you soon. Bye bye.